Can you hear me now, Adina? Well, it's 11.03. Um, we're supposed to have more people, but I think maybe we should just go ahead and get started. Does that work? You're muted, Adina. Hang on. I'm unmuted now. There we go. Okay. Um, and the other participants, feel free to turn on your cameras if you want. Um, believe you on mute. I think um, Adina's going to run through some PowerPoint slides. Um, and yeah, so anyway, I'm Adrienne Sponberg. I am the Director of Communications and Science for ASLO and one of the PIs of the Lorex program. And excited to get this next group going. Um, yeah, so Adina. Let me share my slides. I can do that. Okay, I'll open this. And share. Share. Okay, can everybody see the slide? Yep. Okay, great. So welcome everybody. My name is Adina. I'm a faculty member at the University of California in Santa Cruz and I'm helping Adrienne and the ASLO team coordinate the program. Uh, what we wanted to do today is spend a little bit of time to introduce the program, although most of this information is already posted on the website, but mostly it's to have an opportunity for you to ask questions if anything is not clear on the website and you would like to you know get more information so uh, the program is an international research experience for students it's an nsf supported program and the goal of the nsf for supporting su such program is to develop a globally engaged U.S. science and engineering students that can do international research and feel comfortable doing international research and collaborating with the scientists in other countries. And uh, for ASLO, the goal is to, to increase the communication among the, the ASLO members and enhance you know, uh, future careers of young scientists and limnologists and oceanographers. The funding we have is for three years and the first year is already running and um, we're planning right now for the second cohort. Um, LORAX, by the way, stands for Limnology and Oceanography Research Exchange. And the reason ASLO is, is invested in that is because we feel that, you know, the waters don't have borders and much of the, the problems that are facing the oceans and the lakes are global in nature and we could increase our ability to address this program problems by collaborating and working with each other. Um, this program is unique because most other IRIS programs that the NSF funds provides money to PIs to take students and work with them overseas on the project that uh, the faculty or the PI um, designed and planned. And while working in such, in such a way, it definitely is fun and interesting. It really does not train students in the process of how to develop such a program, work with international uh, partners, and kind of design their own project for themselves. And in that respect, the Lorax is unique because it's actually its goal is not for the PIs to design the program and the experience, but for the students. It's a bottom-up student-driven experience to encourage students to incorporate international collaborative um, work in, as the, in part of their future careers. 
And again, it focuses on anything in the aquatic sciences and aquatic research. Usually projects are uh, related to what the student is already working on. And this experience should more accurately reflect how to conduct international research when you have your own lab and you're a, an independent scientist. But most important in this whole discussion or this whole explanation is that this is a collaborative project, meaning it's not driven by the student advisor or the interaction with your host is not a student advisor relationship necessarily. The idea is that the student and the collaborator are more or less equal in terms of what they bring to the table. Obviously, your collaborator could be an established professor and um, maybe more has more experience, but they should get something. Both parties should benefit from this interaction. So keep this in mind. You shouldn't be expecting that your collaborator will function as your PhD advisor and tell you what to do. You have to be the one initiating the project. So what are the goals of the LORAX prog program? It includes both research and education aspects the, in terms of research, cutting out, uh, carrying out cutting edge research that is relevant to oceanography and limnological programs in terms of education, ter uh, training students in initiating, coordinating, and executing research projects, participating in international re research, functioning as part of a team, and experience of working across cultural environments. Um, now I want, with that background, I want to go and explain a little bit what are the components of the program and the partners. So the program includes webinars and workshops, and these are open to all students, not necessarily the, only the students that will participate in the summer field program. And they will occur throughout the year, we'll advertise them. In addition, a smaller group of students will be recruited to actually um, or selected to actually participate in the field exchange and to conduct research for between four and eight weeks over the summer. And there is a typo here. Oh, no, it's not a typo. The recruitment will happen in summer 2019. Then we'll have a training workshops and other preparations between now with a major event happening in February at the a ocean science meeting in San Diego. I wrote an ASLO meeting, so each year it will be either ocean science or aquatic sciences meetings. And, and then in the spring and summer, the students will work with their collaborators to prepare for the research. There'll be some more webinars and it culminates with the international research experience for this cohort over the summer of 2020. And then we will still have post experience, reflection, dissemination, sharing uh, of your experience. And uh, again, much of the sharing will happen in the next February where you interact with the new cohort of students and that will be in 2021. So it's a full year of experience. Um, in terms of eligibility for the program, because the, the money that supports the students comes from the National Science Foundation, it is um, only U.S. citizens that are uh, studying in a U.S. Um, institution can be supported by the program in terms of the component that includes the summer research. Um, you need to get a permission from your advisor because we do not want to interrupt your uh, learning and education experience. You also need a letter from your collaborator that agrees to work with you in that respect. And both letters will be uploaded with the application to the ASLO webpage. Another requirement is that a, any person that is part of the program will be an ASLO member. And uh, membership is only $15. It's a good idea to be a member regardless. 
And finally, once you're admitted to the program, you have to participate in all of the scheduled activities of the program. Um, the selection is based on a competitive proposal and the evaluation of the proposal is based on intellectual merit, feasibility of your research, and that is really a collaborative project. So the role that your collaborators are uh, playing in this collaboration, the benefit to the students. So if it, how closely is it really contributing to your professional development? And uh, there's also diversity and equity considerations that will be taken into account. In terms of the application, it will be online. It, the application is already open and it will be closed on July 31st. And you'll, each uh, applicant will have to put a proposal in, which will include a cover page listing the title, name, institutes, and so on. An abstract summarized and five keywords that are summarizing the research idea. And then the, pro, the project description, which is limited to five pages, that includes exactly what you plan to do with a section or, um, justifying why this is important to you and why the host institute and the role of the collaborators. So we, we can tell why it's really important to do this project overseas and with that person you're collaborating. And then obviously references, and then I said letters from your advisor and your collaborator, which will be uploaded separately. Timeline. As I said, the application is open until July 21st. Today we have an information webinar, um, which will be recorded and posted on the web, and hopefully other people will have the opportunity to listen to it. Um, we'll announce the participants that will go to the summer program in September, early September, and then there'll be another webinar in November. Between December and February, you will have webinars or information will be provided about each of the hosting sites, and then a lot of activities will happen in February during the uh, either aquatic sciences or ocean sciences in this case in San Diego. There'll be a day on the Sunday before the meeting, a full day of activities. We'll have a dedicated session and a town hall meeting at the minimum. And then between February and the summer, there'll be a few webinars, but mostly this is the time where you do all the detailed planning with your collaborators to get ready for the summer activity. And then, you know, in the summer, you will participate in the activity following again by another webinar in the fall to kind of share your experience. And the program covers all of the participation activities re relevant for the training at the ocean science meeting. A tra travel from a main airport in the US to your destination, and then an allowance to cover housing and food expenses for between four to eight weeks. Okay, you could stay longer, but we have money to only cover up to eight weeks, although some of the programs may have additional funds to extend this stay. I want to emphasize that just to make it clear that we don't have money and it's beyond the scope of this program to actually fund the research it's expenses themselves, any materials, supplies, analysis, permits, shipping, and so on. So this is something that you should discuss with your advisor and your collaborator to see how to actually fund the program. And we recommend that you apply for small grants to do that. We also don't cover insurance or visas, although this should be insurance should if you're a registered U.S. student and since this is part of your uh, research work uh, as a student, most universities cover this insurance. The expectations is that you participate in all scheduled activities, present a poster or talk at your host institute, 
participate in formal evaluation of the program, which we will have, which means before you go on the summer activity, during and after you come back, you may be asked to fill questionnaires and contribute to the blog, website, social media, and reflection activities, and then participate in the next ASLO sessions, um, in the next either ocean science or aquatic science activities in February, and help the new cohort for next year as needed. But mostly we really want you to be safe and respectful to your hosts and collaborators because this is the key for a mutual productive and beneficial interaction do you does anybody have questions until now before i describe our partners adrian do you want to mute people i mean i there we go. I see Hannah is unmuted. I think people can unmute. Hannah, did you have a question? I don't hear her. So I, don't, I don't hear anything either. Hang on. Let's see if the chat's working. Oh, now she's remuted. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we have partners from nine countries and uh, from four countries and nine different programs within these countries that span a broad spectrum of marine and freshwater sciences and offer a diversity of research opportunities. There's three programs in Australia at Southern Cross University, two programs in Canada, one more oceanography and the other limnology focus. There's two programs in Israel, one in the Mediterranean and one in the Red Sea. And there's two programs in Sweden, one in the main campus at Umeå and one at Abisko, uh, where the Abisko research station again is more limnologically focused and both are uh, relevant to climate research impacts. As you can see, they're spread all over the world and cover pretty much any amongst or overall cover every, any area in name aquatic sciences that we can imagine. So quickly going over um, all of the partners, although all of this information is present on the ASLO Lorex webpage. So the a Department of Oceanography at Dalhouse University in Halifax. It's a very big and well-known uh, oceanographic department covering biological, chemical, geological, and physical oceanography. And the GRILL uh, group is in Montreal, although it's a consortium of different universities, and they have access to um, the uh, lake systems do a lot of lake and uh, large river delta programs. Again, more information could be found on the web about the GRILL program. And then the, in uh, Australia, we have three institutes that are um, affiliated with Southern Cross University. One is at Cuff Harbour in New South Wales, and that program is uh, focused on coastal research and mostly on impacts uh, that address marine resilience and ecosystem resources. The, the program at Lismore uh, focuses on coral reefs, whales, and marine chemistry, pollutions, and fisheries. And another program at Lismore is uh, focused on global change issues, nutrient eutrophication, greenhouse gases, hypoxia, and so on. The programs in Sweden are affiliated with Umeå University. There's people that can do their work on the main campus in Umeå, but there's also the opportunity to conduct research at the field station in Abisko, where there's, as you can see in the image on the right, a lot of lakes and a lot of um, lakes observe it, observing and lakes monitoring. So 
This looks at Arctic or polar systems with a lot of freshwater um, programs. In Israel, there's two programs. One is in the Mediterranean, in Haifa, and this uh, Cherney School of Marine Sciences has some unique programs, including some um, archaeology and civilization, so submarine archaeology, as well as a, a very, very a new department in marine technologies, focus on geosciences, but also marine biology. And finally, there is a program in the Red Sea where uh, the station, the field station, is affiliated with lots of universities in Israel, but the focus is on oligotrophic systems and particularly corals and coral reefs. So um, what do you do to start? You have to think of a research idea and how, uh, and it should be a feasible research idea. Discuss this with your advisor. Find a collaborator in one of these institutes. I would suggest putting together a short white paper and an email to introduce this collaborator and check if they're interested and then work together on writing a proposal. And there's a YouTube video that Adrian and Brian Palermo uh, prepared. A link is over here and will be posted on the Lorex webpage that um, discusses and gives more information about initiating collaborations. And with that, I'm happy to answer additional questions. So I'll unmute you, Hannah, and you can let me know if you have more questions. Okay. Hannah, can you hear us? Not hearing it. Adrian, do you, do you I want to add anything? Um, um, no, I, I don't have, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious if anyone has any questions. I think you covered everything pretty well. Okay, so I guess we'll uh, post this on the web and there's our email addresses and people can email if they have more questions mm -hmm. and we'll take it from there. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.